Hey, welcome to the Gospel of Luke. It's Luke 23. This is the crucifixion chapter. Jesus has just been crucified. His body's been taken down, put into the tomb. Let's read what happens in verses 54 to 56. That day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew near. Then the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after, and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. So Jesus has died, and the body's been quickly taken down. They are preparing the spices, but they don't have the time because sundown is imminent. Jesus' body is laid in Joseph's tomb, and the ladies are preparing the spices, you know, because that's part of the burial thing. They put all these spices in, but they don't have time. The sun goes down, and now they, they wait because nothing's going to be done during the Sabbath hours. The Sabbath for the Jewish people was from sundown Friday through sundown Saturday. That is how they mark the days, the first day to the second day to the third day, and so on. And the seventh day begins at sundown Friday evening, and it ends on sundown Saturday evening by our reckoning. And by the way, I said this is the way the Jews keep time, but this is actually the way that the Bible records that humanity would keep time from the beginning. Go to Genesis chapter 1, and you'll see it. And the evening and the morning were the first day, and the evening and the morning were the second day, and the evening and the morning were the third day. It's evening and morning. So biblical reckoning, we don't have to go completely by biblical reckoning ourselves, but biblical reckoning is from sundown to sundown. So there's not time here, but notice Jesus has died on the cross. Some people say now, well, suddenly one of the Ten Commandments, the seventh, uh, the fourth commandment, the seventh day Sabbath, we don't need to do that. That's just a cultural thing. Just relax. Any old day will do. Any old thing on any old day. I want you to notice that the followers of Jesus, here they are, the followers of Jesus, even it's Jesus who needs burying. And it's like, well, it's Sabbath. And they're faithful to God. They're still keeping the commandments. Jesus has died on the cross. And they're going to wait until the morning after Sabbath is over and the light has come on. And it would be the first day of the week. They're going to wait until that time to do the work of putting the spices and so on for his deceased body. Just an interesting piece that the key followers of Jesus are observing the Sabbath here even at this extraordinary time. Something to think about. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, the Bible record is clear. Your followers were true to their convictions. They were true to the law of God. And even, even they're going to wait to put the spice, strips of spice cloth around the body of Jesus who they loved to the maximum degree. They're going to wait because it's the seventh day. It's the Sabbath, a day you made for man and God to commune together. Bless us, Lord. Help us to revisit the Sabbath question and which day it is and how we can honor you on the day that Jesus honored the seventh day Sabbath. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friend, it's late in Earth's hour. The Ten Commandments have never changed. There's a signal here in the Bible to us to look. Again, the Sabbath and Sunday question, and to choose Shabbat, to choose the seventh day, and to observe that. And there are millions of Christians around the world who do. But let's leave it there. God's blessings be upon you today as you look into his word and as you and I follow Jesus. No matter what the culture does, no matter what the government does, no matter what the church does, as we follow Jesus.